In this video, I'm gonna be giving you an introduction to the Shortcuts app, which is Apple's latest addition to Mac automation as of Mac OS Monterey. Now, if you have been using iOS shortcuts, then this will probably be somewhat familiar to you. Uh, and indeed, the way that you actually create shortcuts by building up a series of actions is exactly the same process. Also, if you have created shortcuts on iOS, then those will automatically sync over iCloud over onto the Mac as well. And assuming they're not dependent on anything that's running on your iOS device, such as a particular iOS app, or something like that, then they will also work on the Mac as well. And vice versa, anything that you create on the Mac will also sync across to uh, iOS as well. So it is a great way to sort of combine uh, these workflows that we've got across all of our devices. So without further ado, let's just jump straight into the interface, shall we? And this is basically what it looks like when the app opens up. You'll find that you are in this view, which is the gallery view, and you'll have this sidebar over on the left-hand side. If it's not showing up, then you may want to just press this little button here, which is the uh, toggle for the sidebar. Uh, so click on that one and the sidebar will pop out. Obviously it's popped out to the wrong side for me, but there you go, <laughs> and now you can see it. Uh, and as you can see, we've got this menu item here called the gallery. Uh, and this over here on the sort of right-hand side, the large pane window, uh, that is the gallery view. And that consists of a number of pre-made uh, shortcuts that Apple has created very kindly <laughs> that we can use as a starting point with automation. And I'm going to come and have a look at those in a little bit more detail in a moment. But let's just have a look at what else is in the left hand sidebar as well. So underneath that, you'll have a section which is labeled My Shortcuts. Uh, and so you'll see these three headings, uh, All Shortcuts, where you'll find all of your shortcuts that you've created. And you'll also find quick actions and menu bar items. Now I'll come onto those in a little bit more detail later. Now for you, if you haven't already created shortcuts on iOS, then you may not have anything else, but I've got some here that are different uh, uh, folders of organization of my existing shortcuts. And I should say that also you'll see for all shortcuts, you'll see that there is potentially a number there. And that is in my case 49, because that is the number of shortcuts that I created on iOS that have now been synced across to my Mac. Uh, but for you, that might be zero, but don't worry about that. We're soon going to uh, build out your list of shortcuts and get some uh, productivity going on. <laughs> but let's come back to the gallery view, shall we? And uh, let's have a little look at uh, the way that this is organized. So uh, we've got some... Uh, uh, little articles here, so shortcuts for Mac OS. So this is just specific things for Mac OS. Uh, and then here you've got different uh, games and things like that, those two headers. Uh, but for me, there's not a huge amount in there. I would concentrate more, if I were you, on having a look down here at these different categories, because here we've got a series of categories. There are only four items shown in each one, four different shortcuts. However, there is also this little see all uh, link here that will expand that out to all of the shortcuts that are within that particular category. So the sorts of categories we've got are get stuff done, get organized, essentials, uh, work from anywhere. So these are things like uh, break timers, start my next meeting, start a personal conference call, uh, reflect on the day. Always a good one. <laughs> Don't forget to do that journaling at the end of the day. Uh, morning routine. So uh, what time do I need to leave by? Things like that. Going through this list of shortcuts is actually a great way to get an idea of what is actually possible with shortcuts. And it can really get the mind going uh, to think about how you might be able to work these into your sort of daily workflow uh, and uh, how you may be able to get some uh, great uh, optimized working and productivity out of them. Uh, some of them are also just uh, nice to have, uh, things like maybe a coffee timer or something like that while you're waiting for your coffee to brew, <laughs> whatever it happens to be. But I'm not gonna go through all of these lists, obviously, because there are too many to just go through one by one. Uh, but really go and have a dig in and just look at even the titles will give you an idea of what they're doing. But you can also go a little bit deeper with all of these. Now, if I scroll back up to the top uh, and we'll take this category at the top, get stuff done. As I said, there are only four displayed on this particular window here. Um, but if you click on the see all, uh, then you'll we'll see that it does expand it out and it will show you uh, all of the ones that are within that category. The other thing that that's done then as well is it has actually expanded it out to give you the description of each one as well. So here you can see um, what these particular things do. So this one here turns text into audio. Uh, so there you would be able to just highlight a patch of text on the screen and have it read it to you, for example. Uh, this one here, how many days until. So this is see how many days there are until a particular milestone of your choice uh, and so on. So you can just see what uh, what's going on in each of these. You can also click on any one of these and it will bring up a bit more information about it. 
So there you've got the same description, um, but here also you'll notice that this one does also work on the Apple Watch. So that's something as well as being available on Mac OS and iOS, I should also mention that it's also available on Watch OS as well. So there are shortcuts you can create uh, and you can create them on the Mac and then have them working from your watch. So we could just add this into our list of shortcuts now if we wanted just by clicking on here, but maybe we want to just have a little bit more of a dig into it before we do that. Uh, well, there is this little uh, button up at the top of any of the shortcuts where you've got these three little dots. Uh, now clicking on that will open up a, uh, a way to examine exactly what all of the actions are within this shortcut. So a shortcut consists of a series of actions that it's going to perform uh, whenever it is triggered. I'll come on to different ways that you can trigger these a little bit later, by the way. Um, but this is how basically these shortcuts are built up. So in this case, it's going to take some text. It's going to take a specific, uh, specified date, and then it's going to get the time between that the current date and that date. And then it's going to show us the result uh, related to the text and the time between those two dates as an output. A lot easier for me to just actually demonstrate this for, to you. Um, but that is basically just a great way if you want to actually dig into what's going on. So remember these three buttons at the top, these three dots, I should say, at the top. Click on that and you'll be able to just sort of examine exactly what's going in. So a great way to reverse engineer these shortcuts and figure out how you want to build something yourself. But let's just actually add this one in, shall we? Uh, so I'm going to add this shortcut. And here it's prompting me for a couple of bits of information in order to set up the shortcut. We're only going to have to do this uh, once, but then uh, in this case, um, but then once it's done, we'll just be able to trigger this and we'll, I'll show you how we can do that in a moment. So what it's asking me for is, uh, bear in mind, this is how many days until, that's the name of this uh, shortcut. So it's saying, when is the event you are counting down to? So let me just pick a totally arbitrary day. Uh, the 3rd of May happens to be my birthday. <laughs> so I'm just going to type uh, 3 May there. Now I could put a specific year if I wanted to count down to my uh, 50th, 60th, 100th, whatever it was. <laughs> then I could put the actual year in there as well. But if you just leave it blank and just put the day and the month, then it will count down to just that month every year or that date every year. Now, what is the name of the event? Uh, well, it is my birthday. So I'm just going to type that in there. Uh, and now I'm going to click on Add Shortcut. And that is it. We've set up that shortcut. So where do we find that now? Well, you'll notice that this number of shortcuts has now gone up to 50. So if I come into the All Shortcuts, you can, by the way, drag these around to organize them. There are other ways to do that with folders and so on. So I'll come into that a little bit later. Uh, but when you create a new shortcut, it will just default to coming right at the top left here. So you can see here how many days until this is the new shortcut we've just created. And it's just popped up to the top there. If you want to color code these, by the way, you can just right click on them uh, and change the uh, color and icon. So this one has got uh, an icon in the top corner, which is a little calendar. You can see that all of these have got some form of icon in them. And the actual tile itself is a, uh, a specific color as well. So I can edit the color and icon and I could come in here and let's say I want to make this one uh, red, for example. And then let's say you want to change the icon. You could make this whatever you want. And uh, not sure I can pick up a birthday cake just straight away out of there. But let me just pick something as an example <laughs> just to show how easy it is to change. So I'm just going to pick that icon. And there you see we've changed it to red with a little sunshine icon because I'd like to think it always shines on my birthday. <laughs> but uh, in any case, if I click on the little uh, play button now, so uh, this one is going to trigger it. You can notice as I hover over them, it's got this little play button symbolizing that this one is uh, available to uh, trigger. So if I click on that, then what's happened is it's just brought up this little pop-up window over here and it says my birthday is in two months 16 days 21 hours and 16 minutes so uh, that's very good I'll be using that every day just to count down the days of course um, but maybe I want to edit that because that did give me quite a lot of information I don't think I need to know it right down to the second so let's just use this as an example of how we can actually go and edit any of these so all I'm going to do now is if I just click on the um, uh, the shortcut so I'm just going to double click on it not on the play button on the actual action itself the shortcut itself rather uh, and now this has opened up the editor so this is a second window and this one is where we're going to edit this uh, particular shortcut and you can change the title so this is how many days until that's just the default title of it but let's say i'm going to count down to lots of different days so i might want to just be more specific here and i could just call this one days until my birthday there we go uh, and what this is doing is it's got some uh, a variable which is uh, a bit of text 
So this one in this case is what we specified at the beginning, my birthday. So there we're actually specifying uh, some text. Then the next thing is we're looking at a specific date uh, and this is called specified date. And the, uh, the date of that was the 3rd of May. And then what it's doing here is it's actually performing this little action. So get time between the current date. So current date is a variable that it can just pull out and say like, what's the date today? Uh, so it's getting the time between that date and uh, the date, which is this one here. Uh, and then it's uh, looking at that in the total time. And then what it's doing for the output in this show part here is it's created this little pop-up with uh, this little output. And this is outputting text. And then it's, uh, so the text is this part, my birthday. And then it's saying is in, and then it's adding in this variable, the time between the dates. So that's where we're getting my birthday is in, and then the total time where it gave me the time in days, minutes, and uh, seconds, and whatever. So let's say I want to change this, and instead I just want it to be in a specific number of days. Well, I can come in here and I can click on this total time, and instead of being in total time, maybe I want to come down here and just change that to days. So that's now going to give me a number of days. Uh, and so in this output, what I want to do is I just want to add in the word days at the end. So it's going to have uh, my birthday is in, and then it's going to give count the number of days. And then at the end here, I'm going to just come in here and, oops, a daisy, let's do that. I want to just come in here and edit this bit, and I'm going to put days like that. So I'm just going to type that in manually. Now, when I run this one, what you'll see is it's popped up and instead it's reflecting that change that we've just made. So now it says my birthday is in 75 days. So that is how we can go in and edit these things. Don't worry about all of these different things in terms of variables and all that sort of stuff. I am gonna come onto those in a later video as well. I'm just showing you the principle that once we've got a specific a specific shortcut, we can go in and sort of analyze it, we can tweak it, we can change it to be whatever we want. And in fact, you could add in a whole series of other uh, actions here. So uh, over on the right hand side, I had to think about my left and right there, <laughs> over on the right hand side, um, we've also got a way to add in other actions. So you've got all actions uh, related to uh, different things. So you can add in calendar events, all those sorts of things. This is another great way, by the way, to just get an idea of what's possible with shortcuts is to just go into this editor here and then go to all actions. And then you can just sort of scroll down this list. And as you can see, it's really quite a long list of all the potential actions. Uh, so you can get an idea of the sorts of things that you might actually be able to do uh, within your automations and within your shortcuts. So let's say that I'm happy with that. I just want to be able to show my uh, birthdays in 78 days or however many days it's in. So how are we going to trigger that? Well, we can obviously uh, do that from within the shortcuts app. As we've seen, we can open the shortcuts app and we can come and we can press the little play button next to the thing, uh, next to the, <laughs> the shortcut. Uh, but of course, as you start getting more and more of these, then uh, you're not gonna wanna go in there. It sort of defeats the object if you're having to do that all of the time. So how can you actually trigger these? Well, when you come into the editor, then you've got this uh, little section on the uh, here in the top menu bar, and this is the shortcut details. And when you change to that, you've got a few different options. Um, so you can pin the, uh, the shortcut into the menu bar. What that will do is it will add it up into the menu bar. So we've got a little shortcuts icon just there in the menu bar. And if I click on that one, you'll see that it's got all of the shortcuts that I have assigned to the menu bar feature there. So only one at the moment. Uh, and if I did have multiple ones, then it would just still be that one icon, but just with a drop down with all of those different shortcuts. And then you can trigger them from there. So I could click on that and that is now going to activate that shortcut. And sure enough, if I come back to this uh, view again, uh, then here we go, we've got uh, the output is uh, my birthday in 75 days. <laughs> so that has been calculated uh, from the uh, click into the menu bar. Uh, that still might not be uh, very relevant for all of the shortcuts that we're using. So there are some other options. So here we've got use as a quick action and it will default to uh, this one. So we can either use it from the finder or the services menu. Services menu is uh, a way to uh, create different shortcuts and then trigger them from within uh, certain applications. So uh, if I come over to the notes app, for example, and I'm just gonna share my screen again, and I'm just sharing now, this is actually my Ecamm Live window. <laughs> um, but here, if I come into notes, um, then you'll see here we've got this services menu, and there you can see that shortcut has been added in there. So you will have some that are uh, work well for specific applications, and so you may want to have them in that particular services menu. 
There are a couple of other options though as well. And uh, one of those is to have it, uh, you work with a keyboard shortcut. So we'll click on that uh, keyboard shortcut there and you can just assign a keyboard shortcut to it. So I'm just gonna assign something a little bit random. <laughs> there we go, hang on a minute. It's obviously not liking that. There we go, I'll put that one. So now if I uh, just click out of there and I click on that keyboard shortcut, uh, then sure enough, it has just triggered that uh, little shortcut again. So those are the different options you've also got if you want to have this shown in a, a share sheet. So a share sheet in, in iOS is where you want to share something and you want it to go to a particular place. Uh, well, maybe you want to perform actions, for example, like on an image or something like that. And so you want to include this in iOS so that you save an image and you want to uh, have you click the share sheet action to be able to do something else with it and have these uh, actions that you're creating these shortcuts you're creating rather uh, be available on iOS. So here, as you can see, you've got ways to allow it to work on uh, iOS and you're specifying where it will work. And here as well, show it on the Apple Watch so you can decide whether you do want it on there or not. Because obviously you don't want a load of stuff on your on your iWatch if it's uh, uh, on your Apple Watch if it's not going to be uh, useful. So this is where you can just have a look at the visibility. There is also a privacy setting. If you have needed to give it access to particular apps or uh, things like that, then those will all uh, feature in here and you'll have to grant access to things like that or if you're doing uh, screen recordings or something like that. So this is where you have a look at the permissions that basically uh, this particular shortcut has and you can uh, revoke those from within here. Uh, and then you've got a couple of other things to do with the setup. So this is basically uh, the if you remember when I set it up, what was the date and the text. So here is where you can add in other fields and customize the shortcut. So this is all within this section here, the shortcut details. And that is basically how we uh, we can play around with these to, uh, to look at how they're working. We can add in different uh, actions and things like that. Uh, what we're going to be doing as we go forward with the uh, future videos is I'm going to be basically building this out so that we can look at some other examples of how we might go about uh, building our own actions and using some of the components that we've got in here uh, to uh, then go on to build something a little bit different. Now, I'm going to leave a link to the next video in the series over on that side. <laughs> so uh, do check that one out and uh, let's get straight into the next video.